everyone, this is Maki. Today I am going to talk a lot about spoilers of the movie Gundam Seed Freedom. If you prefer to watch the movie without prior information, I recommend skipping this program. Today, I plan to analyze the settings of the mobile suits that appear towards the end of the story. In Japan, the novel version written by Mr. Ryugoto, one of the writers of the movie's story, will be released on March 26. He played an important role in creating the story of the movie. While watching the movie, please pay attention to the credits at the end. In the screenplay section, the name of Ms. Chiaki Morosawa is written first. She was Mr. Fukuto's wife and has passed away. Then the name of Mr. Goto is written finally. The name of Mr. Mitsuo Fukuda is written. It's a small detail, but it shows the deep respect that Mr. Fukuda had for Ms. Morosawa and Mr. Goto. It seems that Mr. Goto has already received the finished book. The book on the right is the second volume of the novel. It is much thicker than the first volume. I'm also looking forward to its arrival. I really hope it will be translated and published in many countries. Also, an illustration in collaboration with the movie Doom has been released. It is a story set in outer space. The novel was published in 1965 and it is a popular work that was considered difficult to adapt into a movie because of its complex story. Mr. Fukuda also released a comment about Doom. Doom was a work that Mrs. Morosawa loved very much. I am deeply moved by this collaboration. By the way, the name of the enemy organization in the initial planning stage of Gundam Seed Freedom was Doom. It was eventually changed to Foundation. The long speech given by Lars Klein at the end of the movie was taken directly from a text written by Ms. Morosawa, as Mr. Fukuda mentioned in the past. The theme of this movie is love. It's not just about the love between Lars Klein and Kiro Yamato. It's a work filled with many forms of love. Let's go over the mobile suit settings. This is what Mr. Fukuda said in the Great Mechanics magazine. There are some surprising details. First of all, there are a lot of old models of mobile suits. At the beginning of the movie, there are many 105 daggers. These are older mobile suits than the Winams and are capable of equipping striker packs. However, there are also many 105 daggers that are not equipped with striker packs. The Zaft Force is also used in Din and Zaruto. They are regular forces, but they do not use Saku or Gao. Mr. Fukuda said about this. I thought about what kind of error the movie depicts. I thought it was not a world where new models are introduced one after another like in Seed or Destiny. I thought it would be an era where old weapons are used as efficiently as possible although some new weapons appear. The reason for the appearance of Destiny Gunnam and Impulse Gunnam also follows this idea. It was not decided based on the sales plan for plastic models. We decided on the world view, and then the sales plans for the plastic models were taken into consideration. Mass-produced mobile suits will always be used in various battlefields, especially in conflicts that are not between major powers, old weapons will be consumed in large quantities. In the early part of the movie, the battle depicted involves Blue Cosmos as the opposing organization. Blue Cosmos seems to be losing its influence on the Earth's alliance. 
The Eurasian Federation, a member of the Earth Alliance, allows Compass and Foundation to suppress blue cosmos. And Compass is sponsored by the Atlantic Federation. The blue cosmos that appears in the movie seems to be an organization with a terrorist nature. The scene where the damage destroy Gunnam is used was also impressive. They don't have as much economic power or power as they used to. Many people may be curious about the unmanned mobile suits used by the Foundation. If unmanned mobile suits have become usable, the war could escalate further. Treats Kashrasia, who appears in Gundam Wing, thought that the battle with unmanned weapons, which do not cause pain nor sorrow, would escalate and lead to unfavorable results for humanity. Unmanned weapons are not elegant. Mr. Fukuda said the following. The Foundation's unmanned mobile suits are used like drones. They are just mobile suits that fire guns and missiles. They are not complex weapons like the mobile dolls that appeared in Gundam Wing. It seems that complex maneuvers are still impossible. On the other hand, the silhouette system of the Impulse Gunnam that appeared in the final battle performs very advanced actions. It flies through battlefields where enemies are present, fires a large number of missiles and beams, and immediately starts combining actions at Lunamaria's request. The settings for the new type of silhouette system of the Impulse Gun are more unclear at this time. The development of the Dragoon system, which can be used by more soldiers, may indicate that it is being used. If the Dragoon system is being used, it means that Luna Maria was manipulate the silhouette system during the battle with the Impulse Gun. Let's wait for more news! Mr. Fukuda also spoke about the Black Knight Squad. The Foundation is an independent nation supported by plants. The design concept of the Black Knight Squad is to invade and attack enemy positions with fire support from Saft. The Black Knight Squad itself is not equipped with a large number of weapons. An important feature is its high defensive capability. The goal is for the Black Knight Squad, having penetrated deep into enemy lines, to command unmanned mobile suits in combat. In addition, the Black Knight Squad color is simply a superior model. It's not like a successor. It is not fundamentally different from mobile suits such as Shiver or Ruhr. The use of a two-seater cockpit allows it to carry more support equipment. It serves more as a symbol of the nation than a mobile suit designed for combat. For this reason, it has a white and conspicuous appearance. It seems that the shooting weapons of the Black Knight Squad are not very powerful. Indeed, watching the movie from this perspective offers new insights. Please note the scenes in which the Black Knight Squad defeats Compass's mobile suits. All are defeated with large swords, Gelguk and Muosame of course, but even Immortal Justice is defeated with a big sword. This reflects the setting where shooting weapons are not powerful. These scenes were depicted according to such settings. Mr. Fukuda also talks about interesting content regarding rising freedom and immortal justice. I watched a lot of anime and questioned certain elements. One of them is is it really cool for a new model to appear and win? Campus is an entity that is jointly organized by various nations. Its essence is an organization to separate military power. A mobile suit that symbolizes Compass must first appear on the battlefield. All the models of mobile suits are not used in Compass. The story explains that experimental mobile suits are used. 
all the technology of the three major nations supporting campus, the Earth Alliance Front, and all is used. Kira also has some problems with the adaptations. I'm having trouble customizing the software. Not much time has passed since the completion of Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice. They are troubled by the condition that they must use the latest weapons. A certain number will be produced and operated in the future. As of the movie, there are only two in existence. The fact that Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice were designed with mass production in mind as mobile suits is interesting. In past works, there was an element that Strike Freedom was based on the mass production model of Freedom Gundam. It's also interesting that Kira has trouble adjusting to Rising Freedom. Pay attention to the conversation after the first battle, shown in the movie. New Love Flavor dresses Kira, and the others like this house the new model. Kira doesn't answer this question very clearly. He doesn't give a clear answer, like there's no problem. Even small lines reflect the attitude of the mechanics. What kind of existence is the cavalier? Mr. Fukuda describes it as follows. The cavalier is originally a device for infinite justice. In the movies, it's often seen being used by Zugok, which might change the impression. The Gundam series often features elements where electronic warfare is not possible. That's why this mecha is so rare. In scenes where the main mobile suit is upgraded, it's often its attack power, defense power, and speed that are increased. We introduce the Cavalier with a focus on its electronic warfare capabilities. The Cavalier Ifrit that appeared in the movie is based on the Cavalier of Dragor, with elements of the Millennium Falcon also added. It is a weapon capable of long-term independent action. In the real world, it would be something like the Air Force One of the United States military. It can check all information maintain command capabilities and is equipped with means of communication to various countries. The Cavalier is part of the terminal. However, the two Cavaliers that appear in the movie are of most important secrets. They are like a unit working for Cavalry, more important than Orb's regular army. All information collected by the Cavaliers is sent to the Orb government. We also struggled with the design of the Zugark. We faced many difficulties in creating the computer graphics model. Mechanical animation director Satoshi Shigate had a hard time. He said Zugak has a shape that cannot produce action scenes. The fact that the Cavalier is inspired by the Millennium Falcon is interesting. In the final battle, Zuga crushing in with the Cavalier to save Strike Freedom is reminiscent of the scene where Han Solo rushes in with the Millennium Falcon to save Luke. Does that make May Rain Chewbacca? This is a topic we should probably avoid, as it might upset the fans. The action of the Zugok is also something to watch out for. It was mentioned by the experienced veterans responsible for the mech action in the Gundam series as an entity that cannot perform actions. Let's pay attention to its movements in the movie. By the way, many people might be curious about the equipment on the back of the Infinite Justice Gundam Type 2. It looks a lot like the X-Wing from Star Wars. However, Mr. Fukuda did not comment on the design of these wings. Interesting details were revealed about the Zeus silhouette, equipped by Akatsuki. The Zeus silhouette was originally designed as a weapon for the Destiny Gundam. It is a weapon designed for base attacks. One of the design concepts was to wipe out the leadership 
that had fled to the command center 50 meters underground of the old administration government with a single strike. It was not used in the Sea Destiny War. In the final battle of the movie, the Zeus silhouette was used again on the battlefield. There is a scene where Mulot Flavio says to Shen, this is your weapon, and hands the Zeus silhouette to the Destiny Gunnam. This line has a reason. It was originally equipment for the Destiny Gunnam. Since the Zeus silhouette is a powerful linear cannon, it uses a considerable amount of electricity. Therefore, it is originally a special weapon for mobile suits equipped with nuclear engines. Akatsuki also temporarily stopped working after firing a single shot. Mobile suits equipped with nuclear engines can fire it several times. However, the barrel collapses after a single shot, so it has to be replaced. Let's recall the scene of the Zaft Army's invasion of Orb in Sea Destiny. A mobile suit capable of underground invasion, the Geogu, appears. In fact, there is a setting that the Geogu can only operate in places where underground data has been obtained beforehand. This means that Chairman Duano had previously obtained the underground data of the shelter to which the old government leadership would evacuate. Considering that he had even prepared the Zeus silhouette, we can infer that Chairman Duano was extremely wary of cavalry. The fact that such weapons were acquired, analyzed, and modified to be mounted on Akatsuki is also a noteworthy element. It shows that Orb's technicians are extremely eager to incorporate new weapons and technologies into their country. Let's also take a look at the comments about nuclear engines and proud defenders. There is a picture that Buster Gunnam and Duo Gunnam have been upgraded by adding nuclear engines. What is the actual situation? Equipping a nuclear engine doesn't make it invincible or highly efficient. It is just one of many options. Also, there are scenes in the movie where Strike Freedom gets into trouble. In that scene, I'm not running out of energy. The warning is sounded because the face shifting armor's impact resistance is about to exceed its limit. Also, the engine temperature has risen too much and needs to be cooled. Cooling is performed when the Prow Defender combines. One of the critical functions of the Prow Defender is cooling. Also, there was no original plan for a human to pilot the Prow Defender. The cockpit was hastily installed and acts as an emergency manual control section. The original plan was to board in a prone position. Midway through production, I remembered Lars riding a motorcycle. So we decided to control it in a position similar to that of a cyclist. Analyzing Mr. Fukuda's statement, it is obvious that it is very likely that the Pro Defender does not have a nuclear engine installed. It seems that Strike Freedom was revived due to the performance of cooling. Knowing the settings of mobile suits can make for a more interesting experience. You'll understand the nuances of what the characters say and how they choose their weapons in combat. The use of mostly old mobile suits is also a fascinating element. Interestingly, the same phenomenon occurs in the Universal Century. After several major wars, resources became extremely scarce. Especially the small and powerful mobile suits introduced in Gundam Foggia 91 and Victory Gundam became extremely rare. As a result, repairing old mobile suits or combining parts for use became a solution. This is an important element in Cross from Gundam Dust. Let's look forward to even more exciting movies. By the way, I recently created an X account.
I plan to share announcements and snippets of information about the Gundam series. Feel free to follow me there as well. See you in the next episode.